Okay, on this page we're going to discuss uh, four different ways that antibiotics can inhibit bacterial cells. So um, we'll imagine that this is a bacterial cell and example number one has to do with inhibiting DNA replication. Or I'll put as an umbrella under this area, uh, all inhibiting transcription of mRNA. So that's one way the antibiotics can work. They're going to stop the bacterial cell from being able to replicate its own DNA, so it's not going to be able to divide into two cells, or they might stop it from transcribing its mRNA. And a couple of antibiotics I'll give you examples of that work that way. One is called rifamycin. And I believe that this antibiotic is prescribed for HIV-related tuberculosis. So someone that's already immunocompromised with HIV and then contracts tuberculosis might be given this pretty high-powered uh, antibiotic. And then uh, quinolones work in this way. And metrino, oops, dissolve. And this is an antibiotic that's given, um, for example, for bacterial vaginosis. Okay, a second way that an antibiotic could work is by inhibiting protein synthesis. So either stopping it right at the DNA level, like a few of those examples, or inhibiting protein synthesis. And some popular examples that work by stopping mRNA from being translated into a protein. That's what that means, blocking it somehow. Tetracycline is a popular one. Where people have heard of tetracycline sometimes is if they're um, taking this antibiotic, it will inactivate birth control pills, and then they might get pregnant while they're taking a course of this antibiotic. Chloramphenicol. It's another antibiotic that works by inhibiting protein synthesis. And then the very important group of aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides include, among others, but some that we'll list, gentamicin, streptomycin, So those are a couple. And both of these aminoglycosides, both of these examples, are known for being toxic to the eighth cranial nerve. And if you've taken a &P, you'll know that the eighth cranial nerve is the vestibulocochlear nerve. And so that means it could help affect hearing and or balance. So some of the symptoms of that toxicity might appear with a vertigo in the patient, ringing in the ears, actual hearing loss, which may be temporary or permanent,
You can just hope that it's temporary. It's also, so that's one thing, it's toxic to the eighth cranial nerve. Its toxicity also shows its effects on the kidneys. And for that reason, any nurse that is taking care of a patient that's on aminoglycoside antibiotics should be very careful to check as the lab values come in what the serum creatinine level is of that patient. Because if serum creatinine levels start to go up, then that's a sign that the kidneys are no longer filtering as they should and that they could be affected by the toxicity of that aminoglycoside. Okay, and then I believe I'm going to stick, might have to come back and edit this in the future, but erythromycin, erythromycin is another antibiotic that works by inhibiting protein synthesis. If someone is allergic to amoxicillin, then this is often the antibiotic that they'll, they'll prescribe instead. And speaking of amoxicillin, that would be an antibiotic we'll talk about that affects the cell wall formation. Okay, so now let's look at a third method that antibiotics go after in affecting bacteria's ability to carry out their normal functions and therefore their ability to get bigger and divide and all that good stuff. So blocking folate production. Folate is an important vitamin for metabolism in cells. And so if they are deficient in folate, then the cells can't make ATP as efficiently. So we'll put that under the general category of some antibiotics work by inhibiting the metabolism or the ATP production of that cell. And sulfa drugs that have been around for a long time, even back in the 40s, they were pretty commonly used. And these are still used sometimes today, but not nearly as much as a lot of the others. Okay, and then the fourth target of antibiotics coming out to the cell wall, inhibiting cell wall formation. And I'll give you kind of a long list of antibiotics that work in this fashion. So penicillin is one. Amoxicillin. That one's often prescribed for kids' ear infections. And as I said, if someone is allergic to amoxicillin, they may be prescribed erythromycin instead. And they're different targets, but they can both still um, inhibit hopefully, bacterial growth and division. And then bacitracin, or bacitracin. Some of these you may have heard of. Uh, cephalosporins. And the almost notorious at this point, vancomycin. This is the antibiotic that's used if someone... Um, has MRSA, and so they're not responding to um, regular antibiotics, and also for some types of, uh, or some C. diff infections.